In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called generate parentheses. So after I did the validate parentheses question, um, under the similar questions, I thought that there's a question that's related to stack, which is generate parentheses. So I click onto this question and I realized that this question is nothing related to stack. But basically this question is very, very similar, uh, where it uh, uses backtracking to solve the problem. Basically we want to uh, we're given n pairs of parentheses and we want to write a function to generate all the combinations of well-formed parentheses. So basically well-formed parentheses is that we want to make sure that every open parentheses should have a closing parenthesis, right? So you can see here, we have this one right here where we have three open parentheses in a row and then we have three closing parentheses, right? And we also have open, open, close, open, close, open, uh, close, right? So you can see that this is a balance, right? So uh, invalid, invalid form parentheses will basically uh, look something like this, right? Where, for example, like this, right? Where in this case, you can see that we have a closed parentheses and there's open and there's a close, right? So, or in this case, it could be just like open, a close and open, right? Something like this. That could also be a invalid parentheses, right? Basically, we want to make sure we have the open parentheses first, and then we should have a closing parentheses follow, uh, in this case, it doesn't have to be right away. It doesn't have to be right next to right next to the current open parenthesis, but eventually it should have a uh, closed parenthesis that match with the current open parenthesis, right? So if you haven't do the um, validate parenthesis question, I highly recommend to check out check out that question. But basically, this question is not really related to stack at all. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to generate all the combinations um, of well-formed parentheses, right? And if there's only one parenthesis, uh, op uh, in this case, a parenthesis, then we just have to have open close, right? So there's no any other combinations combinations that we can come up with. So you can see here n is basically bigger than or equal to one and less than or equal to eight. So that's our question. Is how can we solve this question? Well, just like any other backtracking questions, right? We have to um, try out with like a smaller example, right? Let's try out a smaller example. Let's say n is equal to one. So in this case, we have to start with a open parenthesis, right? We cannot start with a closing parenthesis. In this case, that would not be a valid answer, right? So in this case, after we start open parenthesis, so we have to close it, right? In this case, we cannot open another one because in this case, n is only equal to one. Now let's say n is equal to two. In this case, if I open, I open, right? I can close, I can close. This will be a one valid one, right? And the other one will be like, if I open, close, open, and I close, right? And let's see, and, and then in this case, there, only, there will only be those two, right? Because I can't not only, I cannot like open, 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 close, close, right? In this case, n is only two. So in this case, you can see that the combinations that we can come up with is only two, right? So basically, just like any other backtracking questions, right? For each and every single characters, for each and every single position in our, in our result or in our combination, Right? for each and every single combination, for each and every character, we have choices for each and every single character, right? For each and every single position in our string, right? For example, this, this character right here, I have two choices, right? I can either have a open parentheses or I can, even, I can have a closing parentheses. So, but these choices have limitations, right? Because I need to have a closing parentheses. Uh, I need to have open parentheses before a closing parentheses, right? So let's say we have a string and we have four spot right now n is equal to two so we know that the string of course the size will be will be four right so in this case the first character is guaranteed to be open parenthesis right because like i said we need open parenthesis to have a closing parenthesis so this is the only path that we can go down to right imagine we have a have a um in this case a a recursion tree right so in this case what's going to happen for our nest decision at this position is that now I have a open parenthesis, so I can have two choices, right? I can have a closing parenthesis, I can have an open parenthesis. So in this case, I can have a open parenthesis like this, right? And I can also have a closing parenthesis. So if I go down to this path, okay? So now at this character, I can also have another choice. In this case, I can have a closing parenthesis, right? But I cannot have an open parenthesis because in this case now we already have two open parentheses already, which is the limit of our of how many param open parentheses that we can have, right? So in this case, the only choice that we have is only a closing. And the same thing here, 
the only choice that we have is a closing, right? Because we have two opens, so now we have to fill them up. And now if we backtrack to this position, in this case, we, we cannot have an open, we cannot have a, we can only have a close. We already visit that. So now we backtrack to here. In this case, we already, we cannot have an open here. So we already did the close. So now we backtrack to this part right here, right? So once we get to here, in this case, once we visit the path for adding a open parentheses at this position, I can now add a closing parentheses, right? So in this case, I add a closing parentheses. And then I go down, right? Just like the FS, I go down to this path. For the next character, I can, in this case, I cannot do a closing, right? Because in this case, I only have one open and that open is already filled up. Okay, so then what's gonna happen is I can only have an open parentheses, right? In this case, what's gonna happen then is that I do a DFS. In this case, I cannot have another open, right? Because I already have two open parentheses. Now I can only have a closing parentheses, right? So in this case, that's the only valid valid choice that we can have. So once that's done, we backtrack. So in this case, at this position, we can only have open, we cannot have a close. So now we backtrack to here. We've done all the two choices that we have for this position. And now we backtrack to here. In this case, there's only one choice that we can have is open, right? So basically you can see these are the two choices that we can have. And this is basically how we um, um, solve this problem, right? Using backtracking. If we draw the recursion tree, this is what it looks like, right? So you can see here, we're starting with an open parenthesis, right? And then we go, we're going to have two choices. You know, either we can have a closing parenthesis or we can, we can have an open parenthesis. And if we go down this path, right? In this case, I can only have a, another open parenthesis because now you can see um, we already have a closing parenthesis here, right? So we cannot have another extra closing parenthesis, right? We The requirement is that we need to have an open parenthesis before a closing parenthesis. So then what's gonna happen then is that I'm gonna do a DFS, right? Down to this path. So in this case, the choice that I have is I can only add a closing parenthesis, right? So add, add a, a closing parenthesis here. And then what's gonna happen then is after I've done that, I will backtrack and then see if there's any other options. In this case, I, there won't be because I cannot add another open parenthesis. So I backtrack and, and, and then I backtrack even to the roots, right? Because I we already visit all the options. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a open parenthesis here at the second character. And then in this case, I can add a closing parenthesis. I can only add a closing parenthesis because we already have two, right? Two open parentheses already. So in this case, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go down this path. So we add a close. In this case, now for the next character, in this case, I can add, a, I can only add a close, I cannot add an open, right? I cannot add a, another open parenthesis, just like I said, we already used up two open parentheses already. So basically you can see that this is basically how we draw the recursion tree and this is how we're gonna solve the problem, right? We're still gonna have two choices, but based on certain condition, right? If this current situation satisfy the condition, then we can do a DFS, go down this path. If it doesn't satisfy, then we can go either way, right? Or in this case, it, let's say if let's say if we already used up all the um, all the parentheses and all the closing parentheses, then we just have to add this current combination onto the result array or result list, right? So now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So in this case, to do to do this in code, um, basically what I did is um, so you can see here in the code. Um, first, I basically call this DFS function, right? And then we're trying to generate all the parentheses, right? Generate all the combinations that we can have, right? So first we're going to pass in this stream builder, right? Empty stream builder. And we also pass in how many uh, closed parentheses that we have to fill in and how many open parentheses that we have to fill in, right? So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna, in this case, initially you can see here, we have zero parentheses, right? That we have to fill in. There's uh, Two, two open parentheses that we have to fill in, right? So once we do our DFS, you can see here, uh, first we know that this doesn't satisfy, right? If it, does, if it does satisfy, that means that we used up all the open parentheses and all the closing parentheses. So we can just add the current string onto the, onto the list, right? And then we just return. Otherwise we add the open parentheses, right? So in this case, you can see this path is that if we have n is bigger than zero, then what's gonna happen is that we're gonna append this open parenthesis and then we're gonna do a DFS. And notice that what we're gonna do is that we're going to, um, because now we have open parentheses, so in this case, we we need to fill uh, one closing parenthesis 
that we had to fill in onto the string builder, right? Like we're owing a closing parentheses uh, that we have to fill uh, that, that we have to insert onto the string builder. And then now we already add a open parentheses. So we're just going to decrease the in, right? How many uh, open parentheses that we have to fill in by one. And then we basically do our DFS, right? And then uh, and after we come back, right? We have to remove the last character that we inserted. In this case, a string builder has this function called set length. Basically, we set the length to be smaller than the previous uh, previous size, right? And then let's say if we have a situation where close is bigger than zero, right? We can just add a closing parenthesis. And then in this case, that means that, this is, like I said, again, close basically means that how many close parentheses that we still owe, right? That, that we still have to insert onto the string builder. So we add this closing parenthesis and then we do a DFS, right? So now this is our situation. Our closing parenthesis is close minus one, right? We uh, we already inserted closing parenthesis and open parenthesis is still the same because we didn't add an open parenthesis. And then we just do a DFS down to this path. And then once it come back, we will just uh, basically remove the last character that we, that we inserted onto the string builder, right? So basically you can see this is how we solve the problem. And as you can see, the time complexity in this case, in, the, in this case is gonna be uh, exponential, right? Because in this case, we're trying to uh, generate all the combinations and try to go down all the path to generate all the uh, valid combinations, right? So you can see that this is how we solve the problem and there we have it, thank you for watching.